Lord, I honor you in this place. For there's no like you, Lord. No like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. No like you, Lord. Big God, how great you are. Oh, Mama, you know me. forward from here uh, thank you for journey I really appreciate your time I know some of you guys might be at work or probably you're busy with your kids or you're doing something but thank you for stopping by this is very important that you hear this um, uh, you can see the topic there is about uh, walking in God's timing not your own timing in God's timing and um, the reason why I came on I'm online today is because of what I experienced it's not because I don't know about this, but I knew about it, but I just choose to ignore it, okay? And um, uh, uh, this is what happened. Um, there was someone that, uh, there was some kind of, uh, 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 we had a misunderstanding, okay? And, um, and I'm not that type of person that like to keep anybody in my heart. I'm in ministry, I'm, in, I'm a worshiper. But knowing that whatever I do, I don't do it for man, I do it for God. So anything that will be pleasing to God is what I'm willing to do, not what is pleasing to man, okay? And if I choose, if I choose, and if it's my decision to walk in God's timing, not any man's time, it's my decision to do what God expects of me to do as a woman of God and as a worshiper, as who I, I claim to be, Okay, you don't do things to please yourself when it comes to the things of God. You do it to please God, regardless of how painful it is. You have to let go yourself. You have to let pride go. You let you have to let that ego go. It don't worth it. Okay. Um, I had a misunderstanding with this uh very loved one, and uh, whether I did wrong, whether he did wrong, at this time of my life is not for me to judge. Okay. So I try my best, my possible best to, to uh, make an amend with this person. For some reason, um, there was something I was expecting from God. A lot has been happening to me, both in my dream. I know myself as a worshiper, but other people call me something else, which I'm not uh, claiming, except when God said it's time, okay? But uh, I've been... I've been having a lot of dream. I've been seeing a lot of things that I've never imagined to see. And I was kind of scared. I called some powerful men of God to explain what I'm experiencing. And they told me what it is. And they gave me some instruction of what to do and how to go about it. So each time, 
each time it's time for me to go to bed i'm always scared because i'm scared to close my eyes of what because there are some things that i've been saying and i'm not ready to say it again but some powerful men of god prepared me already and uh, i was walking towards that excuse me i'm sorry about that um of course i was walking towards that so each time i go to bed now i'm not afraid to close my eyes but what happened was um during this issue with me and this person i'm not really interested whether i did wrong whether he did wrong i was not really interested for him to come be the first one to apologize to me no matter how painful it was at that time i was really hurt but it was getting close to night and I was expecting a lot. I was expecting some things when I go to bed. When I close his eyes, I was expecting for me to, you know, for God to walk, for God to use me, for God to do that which he wants to use me to do. So when I, before I went to bed, I tried several times to try to make peace with this person. But it's not like the person wasn't available or he wasn't willing, but the person was really busy. And the person was not too far from me. At this time, because I said I want to do that which is pleasing to God, there was something inside of me that was telling me, why do you have to go chase this person around just to make peace with him? But it wasn't me wanting to chase him. It was what God was putting inside of me to do. And because the person was not available, when I say available, it's not like he's far away from me. He was around me. He's someone that I can easily and just go in front of him and make that by force peace with him, you know? But I was like, okay, let me respect the person time. He's busy. I'll wait at the right time. I would do it. But the time that I called the right time for me wasn't a time for God. But I was just choosing to do it in my own timing instead of God's timing. I was so eager to hear from God. I was so eager to, to connect. I was so eager to do some things. I was expecting a lot at that time when I wanted to go to bed. But because the thing that I was supposed to do, I didn't do it. And when I went to bed, because anytime I lay on my bed, everybody's already sleeping. That is the time for me to pray. So when I lay down on my bed, all of a sudden, I started praying gradually i don't know how it happened i don't I, I don't i don't know how it happened i just went straight on a trance just went on a trance and on my way something happened that i really want you guys to to really listen to me on my way something happened that really disturbed me i was not able to get myself back i was not able to get myself back I went on a trance knowing that I was waiting to make peace with this person. But because I was waiting on my own timing, I didn't do it before I closed my eyes when I was praying. I was really waiting, but like I said, I was waiting on my timing. And I end up going to sleep, praying. All of a sudden, when I went on a trance, something happened. And this is what it is. On my way going, it's like I was seeing light, and that light, that light came with a star. As I was going, I don't, I didn't really know exact where I was going to end up, but I was seeing star and light. As I was seeing this star and light, darkness kept on interrupting. It's like I will go a little bit, all of a sudden darkness will come in between. I wasn't, I was not able to go all the way through. It's like each time I see star and light, darkness will come and interrupt. Each, each time I try to see star and light, darkness will come in and interrupt. So I was trying to fight my way through. But each time I try to like push my way through, it's just so hard for me to go all the way. I don't know what is it that I was trying, that God was trying to show me, but I was seeing star and I was seeing light. And I know that light that I was seeing wasn't anything bad. God is light himself. But the darkness that kept on coming in, I know that is not of God. So as I was going, the darkness kept on interrupting. I was struggling. 
instead of me to quickly wake up and just open my eyes and just get out of there i wasn't able i was struggling with it there was something god was trying to show me but i, I was not able to get there i was not able to, to 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 get through i was not able to see that which god was trying to show me do you know why because immediately I wake up, even when I wake up, I was shaking. I was, I was uncomfortable. I was not myself. The bed that I was laying is like things was just doing me somehow. Like I just want to scream and run out of the house. But that darkness that was interrupting, immediately I opened my eyes. The first thing was there was somebody that I was supposed to make peace with. Now, it's not like I did not have an intention of making peace with this person. God reminded me before I ever lay in that bed to make peace. But because I was waiting on my own perfect timing, waiting for that person to come close to me, sit close to me before I tell him that I'm sorry. I missed out. I missed out. That darkness that was interrupting the light, that was interrupting where I was going, was that unforgiveness spirit? Was that was, was that was that was that which I was not able to do before I closed my eyes? So I'm here today to let you know, as a pastor, as a worshiper, whoever you are, in what position you're operating in the ministry, please, please, if God have called you. To do his work you have to make yourself fully available don't do things in your own timing do things in god's timing not your own timing. you don't wait for the right time for you to do it you do it when god said do it when he said move you move don't wait for anybody to tell you move before you move don't wait at all the, the truth is I was not myself. I was so miserable. You know, like when you have dream and you just wake up and you are happy that you are out because it was so horrible. With me, when I wake up, I, I, was, I wasn't still at peace. I was disturbed. It's like there was some kind of sickness inside of me that it was meant for me to get to where I was supposed to get to. But because of me not doing what God asked me to do at that timing, distract a lot of stuff. So if you are called to do this work of God, you have to let pride go. I don't care what your title is. It's not all about the title. You have to let go. If anyone has done you wrong, both your wife, as a pastor, pastor's wife, a worshiper, an evangelist, whoever you were, if you said you represent God, do it right. Because nobody knows tomorrow nobody knows tomorrow if you said you are working for god do it right don't do it in your own timing don't do it when it pleases you and don't do it don't pretend when you're doing it because when you pretend it will, it will, it will catch up to you do it right and i will give you a perfect example there are a lot of people climbing the pulpit with unforgiveness they, in their heart they have so they have something against their fellow ones they have something against their their, their their pastor they have something against their wife they have something against their mom they have something against their loved ones but you climb in the pulpit to preach what are you preaching if you cannot if you if you can if you cannot practice what you're preaching what are you preaching what are you preaching as painful as it is what this thing was to me, what that person did to me, as painful as it is, I find it so hard to let go. But when I heard that voice of God, my heart was ready to forgive. But because I did not do it in God's timing, I missed out. But I thank God that I still have more chance. I thank God that God hasn't forgotten about me. I thank God that this is just a lesson for me to learn from. It's not that I never want to apologize. My heart was made up to apologize. To be honest to you guys, my heart was made up to apologize to this person. Whether he did wrong or she did wrong or I did wrong, my heart was made up. And you know why? Because God said, 
because that was the right thing to do. That was God's way. And I was willing to let that go. Regardless of how painful it was, I was willing to let it go. And let God be the only one to bring peace to my heart. I don't, you don't have to wait for that person before you find peace. Just do as God led you to do. And God will be the only one to give you peace. Please, I'm begging you. No, you don't know tomorrow. You don't know tomorrow. You might be getting away with the whole lot. You might be thinking there is always tomorrow. You might be thinking, well, when he or she get off from work, you might be thinking, oh, when I call her, when I have chance, you never know tomorrow. You don't want to say, I don't know, I, I don't know. You don't want to say that. Why you have the opportunity, make it right. Make it right. Make it right. There is nothing good in darkness. The Bible said in John 12, 35, verse 37, it said, then Jesus told them, you are going to have a, uh, you are going to have a light just a little while. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtake you. That is what you don't want to wait for. You don't want to wait for darkness to overtake you. You don't want to wait for darkness to take over. You don't want to wait for darkness to take over that which God wants for you. You don't want to wait because it's not fun. It's not pleasing. Please, I'm begging you. Learn to make peace with your loved one. Learn to make peace with whoever you have in your heart. Before you preach the word of God to people. You are not doing God. You're doing yourself. If you think you have words to tell people. If you think that you can encourage people. Then you can't even encourage yourself. You can't even do that which God wants you to do. Because nobody is even seeing you does not mean they don't know what you, what you, it, it doesn't mean that God don't see what is in your heart. It doesn't mean that God don't see what you're doing. Don't play game with God. I'm here to tell you that. Don't play game with God. But please, I just want to say, make it right. Do it right. God is light and darkness have nothing to do with light. So clear off every darkness from your heart. Clear off every darkness out of your ministry by doing the right thing. Because the right thing is supposed to start. You're supposed to do the right thing. If you want your ministry to flow the way you want it to flow, the way God wants it to flow, then do that which is pleasing to God, not, not that which is pleasing to you. We are struggling in our ministry. Everybody has some people. I'm not saying everybody. I'm not here to judge nobody. But there's a struggle going on in, in, in some ministry. There's a lot of struggle going on. You cannot blame nobody. Ask yourself what is going on. Why is your ministry not flourishing? Why is things not going the way it's supposed to go? Check yourself. There's nothing wrong for you to check yourself. Check yourself. Don't always claim that you are too perfect. Don't always claim that you are too holy. Don't always claim that you're doing everything right. If you take your time and check yourself, you will know if you are doing the right thing or not by checking yourself properly. If you want your ministry to flow, you have to be 100%. You have to surrender to God. And let God alone have his way in your life and in your ministry. It is time to stop playing games. It is time to stop playing game. You cannot trick nobody. People that look up to us in the ministry, people that look up to you as a worshiper, people that look up to you as a mentor, you cannot trick them. God is watching you. If you don't change, God will expose you. I'm here to tell you. I'm not going to say what happened to me in my dream was because I was stubborn. Yes. In a way, I didn't walk in God's timing because I was thinking at the right time, when I have the right time, I would do it. But yes, I was disobedient. The greatest worship ever that you can give to God is your obedience. You can preach from Genesis to Revelation. And if you are not obedient, if you don't go according to God's timing, if you don't go according to what he asked you to do, you are just reading literature. You are just preaching. I don't know what I would call it. You can thank God for the strength for you to continue to do what you're doing. 
but it won't be for long. It will not be for long. Do things right. This is my message to you. Do things right. Do things right. As a pastor, in any way you operate in the ministry, before you get on that pulpit, please make sure you are right with God. Please make sure your heart is clean before you get on that pulpit to deliver God's word. You cannot play game with God. I'm telling you, you cannot play game with God. You cannot play game with God. There are people out there. There are, there, are, there are women, men of God that are out there. I'm not here to put anybody on the spot. But this is what is really going on. You know, you cannot be a minister, wife, or however, what position you are in. You cannot have problem with your loved one and go stand in the pulpit and be preaching and be speaking in tongue and be laying hands on people's head. But you know your loved one is dying, is hurting by you because you hurt them. Your loved one is hurting. He or she is in pain. She's sitting there looking at you. But you pretend like all is well. Like you, you haven't done nothing. God is not saying you did wrong or she did wrong or he did wrong. But just make it right before you deliver my word to my people. Because you are supposed to be the perfect example that people are supposed to follow. Not to just hear you speak. Not to just hear you pray. Not to just allow you to lay hands on them. They want to see that perfect example. You need to prove it to them. I am not saying we are all righteous. I am not saying we are supposed to be holy every day. No. Things happen. Things happen. But the fact that you, you realize you are wrong. The fact that you know that okay, what you did is wrong. Admit it. Even if you don't want to admit it. Just let peace reign. So that God's name will be glorified, not the devil's name will be glorified. Because if you're standing up there and just acting like <laughs> you are holy, the, 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 the enemy is just there watching you. But one day, you will answer to it. And that day might not be right now. It might not be this minute. It might not be an hour from now. At any time, you will get your reward. You never know when, how, but it will come if you don't change. We have to stop playing church. We use the name of God a lot for a lot of stuff. We do, but we are not ready to pay the price. I know I've been here for a little bit long now, but let's learn to pay the price for what we said we want to do. Okay? Let's do it right. So Jehovah's name will be glorified. Let's do it right. Let's do it right. Let's do it right. I'm begging you. Do it right. God bless you. God bless you if you are here. And anybody have done something wrong to you. Or you did something wrong to them. Or whether you did not do anything wrong. Whatever it is. But you have this person in your heart. Please let it go. It's a disease where you have somebody in your heart. It's a big disease. Learn to let go, please. Learn to let go, please. I'm begging you. It's a sickness where you have somebody in your heart. Let go so God will come in. Let go. Let go. When you have somebody in your heart, that is darkness you are putting in your heart. You are clothing your heart with darkness. How can light flow? How can light come in your life when there is darkness occupying? Darkness is occupying every empty, vacant space in your heart. In order for light to come in to occupy that space, let go. Please. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I love you so much. I love you so much. If you still want to stay in here, let's worship Jehovah. This is what brings me joy. This is what brings me happiness. This is what I love doing. I find peace in worship. Thank you for joining. May God bless you. You are the ancient of the
But you're mindful of me You are mindful of me What am I That you gave your only best What can I give That he will lie to you. His name is Igwe, 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 Igwe. Father, you are highly to be lifted up. Hallelujah. But there's no like you, Lord. No like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yeka shatara malibro shatere. Ibraska tara malibro shatara. How great you are Ah, Oh, mama, you know me, man, no Jehovah, this you are the Lord of now Oh, kaka, hey, you know me Oh, remember, remember, you 
you're mindful of me. You are mindful of me. What a man that you gave your only best. What can I give? so much for um staying with me god bless you god bless you god bless you thank you for joining please i am begging you there's a lot that god want to do for you there's a lot that god want to do for you but if you allow darkness to cloud your heart if you allow darkness to cloud you there's no way you will get where, get to where you want to get to please allow the light of god to shine upon you let it shine without no distraction of darkness let it shine let people see the great thing that god is about to do in your life i am begging you please let go and let god in god is light let that light come in you god bless you i love you bye